Supercar sessions are going to roll into the seventh week of this uh, as lockdown continues. For a lot of people on the East Coast, hope this is going to bring you uh, something to distract yourself with for the next few minutes. We're going to shine the spotlight once again on the stars of supercars. We've got the Dunlop Super 2 drivers on once again. So uh, I'll run you through the list. We've got Declan Fraser in here. We've got Aaron Seaton joining the chat from Matt Stone Racing. Uh, we've got Brock Feeney and Ange Missouri from AAA. A uh, big welcome to Tyler Everingham, who's uh, looking very clean cut and clearly at work. So thanks for taking some time out of your busy day. And Matt McLean, the only driver to appear twice in the Supercar session. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Matt. If we had some kind of media award for that, I'd give it to you right away, mate. Well done. Oh, fantastic, mate. Cheers, Chad. Thanks for uh, having me back. Guys, we're, uh, we're a little bit unsure of exactly where the calendar sits at the moment uh, for Supercars. Obviously, Super 2 will come off the back of that. Uh, Declan, let's chat a little bit about where you're hoping to get back and race. Um, you're up in Queensland, obviously. What are you hoping for when we get back to racing? Basically, race anywhere at the moment. It's obviously, been a big break since Townsville. So, um, yeah, obviously, Bathurst is looking like it's shaping up to go ahead, which would be really good. So, hopefully, yeah, we can get back out racing sooner rather than later and sort of get this season back underway. It would be really nice. Who uh, who on here, speaking of the Mega Bathurst weekend, who on here is doing more than just one event that weekend? Uh, that would so, be me. Aaron, what are, you, what are you in, Aaron? I'm in Trans Am and Super 2. Okay, yeah. Is that going to be a tricky thing to do in the same weekend? Uh, no, I don't think so, because it's spread across so many different days. Um, we haven't heard yet how the uh, schedule is going to work out, so we'll just wait and see and uh, just do my best, and whatever happens, happens. Brock, you've uh, you've got the big double up like you did last year. How did you balance the two last year? I don't think it was too bad last year. Where this year's, you know, probably I'll be doing a little bit more driving in the main series car. I think the only fortunate thing is this year uh, that it's an all driver session when you're in the main series. So Russell can do a little bit if it's a back to back session. He'll be able to jump straight in. Where last year, if they were back to back sessions and it was a co driver only session, you didn't want to waste any time. So you'd have to get straight back out there. So um, you know, it's probably a little bit better for me this year, but probably be doing a little bit, a uh, little few more laps as well. Are you looking forward to qualifying a supercar? Because that'll be the first time for you, won't it? Yeah, I can't wait. That's that's probably going to be the biggest highlight of the weekend, I think, for me. Getting out, you know, everyone's on green ties. Everyone's got the same opportunity, and it's my first hit out against those guys. So it'll be very interesting to see where we pan out. Uh, Tyler, you had a crack at doing that last year. How did you How did you find it? Was it a distraction or was it just awesome? Um, yeah, it was really cool. Um, jumping in, doing the qualifying in the main game, something something new. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll push around and see if I can pick up something for the uh, the one thousand, a co drive or or anything. Um, so yeah, we'll wait and see. So you're still putting your hand up for a potential to to fill a co driver role somewhere this year. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'll pick up anything I can get. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll just wait and see how the, the calendar pans out. So it's, uh, it's all up in the air at the moment. Speaking of calendars, is that a very young Tyler Everingham behind you? No, that's actually my sister. Oh, is it? I'm trying yeah. to see. Yeah, she used to have a, the same thing as me, <laughs> jump in a go-kart and run around for a bit. That's cool. Where, whereabouts are you right now? Uh, just at, at uh, the workshed. Okay, what's what's life away from the racetrack like for, for you, mate? Um, yeah, just work in the um, the family business um, as a data technician. So, um, yeah, been fortunate enough to keep working even though we're in lockdown. So it's um, it's been good on that front. And your life away from the racetrack is permanently pretty much based around Triple Eight and the workshop. Can you tell us some of the cool stuff that you've been doing away from racing this year? Oh, uh, I'm on the home by Excel program, so. <laughs> you know, we build those every day and um for customers and, and also us so it's good fun you learn learning lots which is good so what's it like going to work at banyo and, and working out of triple eight every day coming in and, and seeing the team every day what's that experience been like for you the last couple of years oh it's been great you know they've welcomed me as a family and they've taught me taught me heaps especially within the fabrication department now so like putting roll cages in cars and you know, watching the Gen 3 progress from the outside, well, sorry, from the inside. Um, so it's actually really, really cool just uh, being a part of the whole the whole thing. What's your insider knowledge of, of Gen 3? How, how has it progressed so far in your eyes? And has it been a cool thing to, to watch on Vail? 
oh, it's pretty cool to see like the future of supercars, you know, getting built in front of you. So it's definitely pretty cool. Maddie, we know uh, your life away from the racetrack is very music uh, orientated. What's the latest with the band? Because you mentioned a couple of weeks ago you've had a new single come out. How's that gone now? Yes, yeah, so we had a new single that came out and that was going quite well. And then we just uh, dropped some new tracks the other day as part of an EP. Um, so, yeah, that's going quite well. We've, uh, we've got a bit of traction on that. We've got some cool companies on board to help us uh, market that. And, uh, of course, as well, with uh, Bruce Mobile and stuff, we've been doing a little bit of marketing around that, which is handy as well because it's a brand that is involved in both the music side of things as well as uh, the racing as well. So, yeah, it's been pretty cool. It's sort of helped with the downtime that we've had in between races, which is, I mean, as anyone in this chat can, uh, you know, agree with is quite hard when you dedicate your whole life to doing one thing and then we're in lockdown we can't even go and do it so for me it's actually it's been all right uh to have that music stuff going on in the background but um yeah as always there's always plenty of racing stuff going on in the background as well in terms of planning and getting stuff sorted so um yeah it's still never a dull day which is good with uh with you being melbourne based is it going to be difficult for you to get back to racing because it's one thing for the supercars drivers and teams out of Melbourne to go and do quarantine or whatever they got to do. But are you prepared to go and do that as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anything it takes to, to go racing, I mean, that's why that's why we do it. We dedicate our life to it. So if we got to do it, then we got to do it as simple as that. So yeah, I'm always open to getting back into state. Like last year, I moved to Sydney, for example. Um, that's purely just because I was going to race uh, the one event at Bathurst. So I lived six months in, uh, in Sydney just because of that. Uh, when usually, as you know, I'd be in Melbourne. So, yeah, I'm always down to, to move. I was going to go to Queensland recently, um, but Rural Vic is now open back up, which means that I can go to the track. I'm from Metropolitan Melbourne, but, um, of course, like we, get, we can get permits to go and operate at the tracks and stuff like that. So, now that that's back open, I think I'm going to stay in Melbourne, but if it closes up again, then I'm going to have to look to for doing some hotel quarantine and moving up to somewhere like Queensland because, you know, everyone in this chat, um, you know, all came from something like go-karts and that's something that you can drive uh, every day. And uh, I must say that it is cool to, to sit in the Super 2 field at the moment and, you know, be with a bunch of drivers that I've either raced against, helped, or, you know, they were in some younger categories and I was racing. And, you know, back when we were all doing that at that time, you're at the track one or two times a week. And uh, now we're going, you know, three or four months without going to the track. And, yeah, it's no good, Chad. So, yeah, absolutely. If, um, if, it, if I need to, I'll be moving um, at Ponto pretty much. Yeah, I hear that, brother. Cannot wait to get back to a racetrack. Um, let's yeah. go to Justin on this one. Uh, Super three to Super two. How was that jump for you so far this year, mate? Was it a was it a pretty big step up? Um, yeah, obviously the team last year were really good uh, with Anderson Motorsports, so they sort of made the progression uh, really helpful. Um, but yeah, going into Super two this year has been a massive learning curve. Obviously, the Ultimates are a lot different to anything driven so uh, Matt White have been fantastic with helping me make sure that I'm basically there straight away so there's obviously still a lot of work that we can do to make sure that I'm right up the front uh, but yeah we're working towards it and so far it's been a really good learning experience. You've also had a big birthday recently congratulations 21 years young mate how did you celebrate that one? Um, me and a few mates went over to Ely Beach, so we spent three days there and then we spent another three days there doing a big training camp on the bikes and going to the gym and playing a bit of golf here and there. So yeah, it was, it was a really good couple of days. Nice. Um, are you still doing any work with Norwell at all? Have you had a chance to get down and, and get to some training with Paul? <laughs> uh, so I've got my new work roster, which has been made it a bit harder. So I'm actually an electrical apprentice as well. So I'm um, working with... Again, just made that very difficult, like getting down there as much as possible, go down and see B Fiend and uh, Paul and everyone, which is, yeah, good to sort of drive something in between these long gaps. Has it been encouraging seeing, you know, a, a former, so many good Norwell graduates like Brock or Anson or Brody make it up through the ranks? Does that give you hope that you're in the right place? Yeah, I know that the people I'm sort of surrounded with uh, through Norwell, everyone's got the same goal. We all want to make it a supercar. So, Having people like Paul behind me, Nath Kayser, all the boys there, like it's, um, yeah, it's a real big confidence boost that I've sort of got the right people and I'm heading in the right direction. Hey, Brock, uh, once we do get to Mount Panorama, it's, there's a fair chance that you're going to be um, not just doing those double duties, but in the championship fight. How, how hard is it to focus back on Super 2, given there's been so many distractions from the driver announcement to the livery launch? How hard is it going to be to get back in Super 2 trim? I don't think it will be too much because you know my whole goal this season has been trying to win that Super 2 championship um, even though the pen's been put to paper for next year and that we got the wild card at Bathurst as well 
my my biggest you know, internal goal for this year was to try and win that championship. So we're in a good position at the moment. Um, you know, everyone's going to be going to Bathurst and trying to get a good result. It'll be the final race for the year. So I'm looking forward to it. I just can't wait to get back in a Super 2 car again. You know, I've been doing a couple of tests in the main series car, but um, there's nothing like jumping back in the Super 2 wagon. So I'm looking forward to that. Aaron, your, your hopes for Bathurst? Are we, we, you mentioned earlier you're in the TA2 car as well, but are we still a chance to see you maybe get a co-driver role somewhere? Uh, no, nah, probably not this year. Uh, just working towards the, the Super 2 and Trans Am stuff and, and making sure we're as pre- prepared as best as possible. Uh, we've been fortunate to be able to do a couple of test days in the meantime and just sort of keep developing myself in the car and uh, see how we end up at Bathurst. How's life at Matt Stokes? We talked to Ange about, you know, walking into the workshop every day. You're full-time at MSR as well. What's the vibe like in that team right now? Yeah, it's really good at the moment. Um, I'm really enjoying being here and part of the team that the guys are awesome and easy to get along with. And any questions I have, the, they have no dramas in, in answering anything. And um, they're all very open and, uh, yeah, just um, looking toward, like, pushing forward up the grid and, um, yeah, just uh, developing all as a team. Ange, plans for the rest of this year? Hopefully, you know, we'll see you back at Bathurst. Clearly, we had plenty of speed. But also next year, what, what's on the menu for you in the immediate future, mate? Well, I'll just sort of see what happens, I guess. Um, play out the rest of the year and uh, sort of test the waters um, towards Christmas and, and see what's available. So it's hard to say at the moment. It's a, it's a tough one to answer, but would you ever contemplate leaving Triple Eight Because so much of your time away from the racetrack is tied in with them. Is it possible to still work for them and drive elsewhere? Oh, I wouldn't say that, you know, sort of all in or, or not all in. You can't really do that, I guess. Um, yeah, I'll probably go back to Melbourne. Don't know yet. Maybe stay up here. It's it's all up in the air at the moment. So we'll see what happens at the end of the year. And, um, yeah, I just want to get back to racing, which would, which would be good. Are you, are you missing home? Oh, yeah. Miss, miss my family, miss my dog, you know. So it is what it is. But I guess it's the same for everyone. You're not missing too much down here at the moment, mate. So uh, <laughs> it's probably not a bad time to be stuck oh. up there. Tyler, how about yourself? Plans for next year? You want to go around again with the, the folks at MWM? Um, yeah, I suppose we'll just um, see what pops up. Um, it's all uncertain at the moment with what's going on in the world. So, um, yeah, I'd love to sort of try and push for, a, I suppose, a main game drive, but... Um, We'll wait and see. Um, it's pretty difficult at the moment. Um, there's, there's so much going on. So, And Matt, uh, you're probably the newest in this chat to Super 2 at the moment. Is it important for you to have a, a bit more experience in Super 2 before looking ahead from there, you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, experience is key and, you know, we're still sort of, I think I've only done five races in a car sort of thing. So, I mean, yeah, and if, if we were to get an opportunity to go to, to main game, of course, uh, you know, you'd want to jump at that, but there'd need to be some pretty serious background uh, work going on to, to make that a, a viable option because, you know, you can't just jump into things and uh, expect to go good, of course, and, uh, you know, we're not really eligible for a super licence yet. If we finish the year off, then we'll be fine. Um, but uh, obviously at this stage, we're not. So uh, fortunately, the wins in the Australian Kart Championship as well um, accrue to some licence points as well, which is handy. Um, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately at this stage, like, yeah, I mean, it'd just be a bit too early for me. I think I definitely want to do another year in Super 2. I like to go into things prepared and I like to do as much preparation, um, as possible. And, uh, when I've only done, uh, what is it? Three rounds or four rounds of Super 2 and that's really it. Um, it's not enough. It's just simply not enough. I mean, fortunately we're going quite well for our experience, but, um, I think it's important to be, to be getting some pretty consistent up the front results, probably more so than what we're doing now. Like I still haven't got a podium or a winner and anything like that. So I think if we can sort of tick all those boxes and get to the get to those points first, then I think um, that I can start considering um, you know jumping up to the next level. How about wild cards? Anyone in here fancy a wild card at some point next year? Like we've seen plenty of Super Two guys do that in the past. Is there any chance of any of you guys popping up for a wild card at some point? I'll leave that one open. Oh, I think for everyone, if if you wanted to do a wild card and you had the opportunity, you'd grab it with both hands. Um, obviously, at the moment, it's a bit hard. No one sort of knows what's happening in the world. So, yeah, well, I guess I can speak for everyone. Yeah, if something came up, you'd definitely take it without without hesitation. Dick, do you reckon you can do it in the Nissans? Would it be possible in the Nissans? Um, I'm not 100% sure. So, 
yeah, I don't know if I could really answer that one. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, finally, Matt, E-Series, uh, last round next week, mate. You're going to go get it or what? Yeah, I can't wait. We've just had a rough run, mate. It's been, been full on. I just keep getting sent um, and, uh, or just putting, putting myself in the, in the wrong position. Um, but uh, no, it's, it's good fun. And uh, as I've mentioned in the last chat, it's just a really cool opportunity that Supercars have uh, provided us with to be able to do something like that because it's, uh, it just carries so many benefits on a commercial front. Of course, like your name is out there getting seen. All the time again, you um, the companies that you're partnering with, of course, are getting exposure. And uh, you know, I've mentioned in the past that it's created a couple of new partnerships for me. So uh, that's worked really well. And both of those are translating through into my uh, real life campaign as well. And uh, that's something that might not have actually happened if it weren't for this E series. So yeah, I mean, of course, I'll uh, I'll go into it again and uh, do as much as I can. But uh, yeah, it's pretty red hot because it's not as serious as real life. So if you if someone's you know coming in a little bit hot in the under break and they don't really care and they'll just hit you off, whereas in real life. There's thousands of dollars and actually lives at stake, um, whereas there's just reaching over and pressing the escape key is the only uh, downfall to crashing into someone. So, yeah, I can't wait. I think we're at Watkins Glen, so I'll hop on at some point and do some laps and then, yeah, give it a crack. But it should be a bit of fun. Nice. All right, Watch guys. out, mate. I think I'm making a return next week. Hey, are you back? I, th I think I might be back for next week, so we'll be on between me and Ms. Oh, no. nice. <laughs> Hey, I got one on the sim already. I'm practicing. Oh, that's good. How good? <laughs> oh, that's good yeah, stuff, man. You've got an E-Series win to your name, Brock. I know. Reverse grid to victory. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, there's what just to throw one in randomly. Formats for Super Two. Who, like we've seen pretty set formats over the last couple of years. One race Saturday, one race Sunday. Qualifying sessions for both. We used to see some pretty different formats in Super 2. Would anyone here like to see some different formats or you think it's perfect the way it is? I think, oh, I think good. it's good to switch it up, I think. But uh, for me and where I'm at, the current format is quite good because you get to qualify and then you get to race. You get to qualify and then you get to race. So for me, uh, it probably gives me the most experience because it gives me the most amount of qualifying sessions. So I like it. But um, yeah, I think it's always important to switch it up and broaden your skill set. Sorry, Ange, I think I cut you off. What were you going to say? Yeah, I, th I think it's good. I like the two qualifying thing. It's, you know, you can move forward within the grid. And, you know, for new tracks, like all of us who go on a tracks we haven't been to, you get another shot at qualifying. So it's pretty good. Yeah. What about a top five shootout at Bathurst? Oh, yeah. That'd be yeah. nice. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Chad, can you see if we can fit that in the TV schedule, mate? That's a cool yeah. idea. You can slide yeah. that one in, Chad, surely. All right. Quality <laughs> quality than a top five shootout. Mate, yeah. with six, six days of racing, I'm sure we can find it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right, I'm making a note of that. Top five shootout for Bathurst. <laughs> well done. Uh, fellas, thank you. And uh, hopefully we see each other real soon. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks guys. See you later. See you.